Hey team, it's Panorama Day. Um, this is my camera. This is the camera I use for everything at the moment. Uh, it's the, my Fuji GFX 102. Um, I used to use this guy right here for a long time. My uh, one of my couple Canon 5 DSRs, great camera. Um, used it for many years with a complement of Canon tilt shift lenses. Now I use still some of those those uh, Canon tilt shift lenses as well as a couple of Fuji uh, tilt shift lenses. This is the 30 millimeter Fuji on this guy. Um, so I've had a few requests about how I go about um, using one of these guys to make panoramas in the field. Something that's very useful with architecture if we need if we can't get far enough away from a building and we need to do a side to side pan out or if we um, can't quite get the uh, top of a building in if we're aimed straight at it we can do a vertical pano um, and you know sh shift our lens up on the body down on the body of the camera um, so yeah this basically emulates a view camera right when you have a view camera you have a front standard and a back standard the front standard holds the lens, it's the lens board, right? The Then you have a bellows in between. The back standard used to be ground glass, and then you'd slide in a film holder for 4x5 sheet film or 8x10 sheet film. Now, most of the time, if we're using a digital back, we're using a, um, I'm sorry, if we're using a, a view camera, we have a digital back on it with uh, you know, a sliding uh, back that has ground glass on one side and, uh, and the, the back on the other. Um, so yes, those uh, independent standards allow us to um, to have movements, right? So we can we can uh, shift, we can rise, we can fall, we can do that with either the front standard or the back standard, um, as and then we can uh, tilt and swing as well. Um, tilting and swinging are to modify your focus. Um, shifting and uh, rising and falling are to uh, edit the way the image circle falls on the ground glass sensor piece of film whatever you want to say um, so you know a, a tilt shift lens does that the same way right we have you know if we can if we think of our camera as the back standard and the lens is the front standard you know not exactly the same but close um, we can uh, use the movements that the tilt shift knobs allow here to, um, you know, so here I'm going to put some rise on the camera. I'm going to keep the, I'll keep the, uh, the camera in the same position and I will elevate the, you can probably see the, um, the lens has risen here, uh, you know, several millimeters above the, you know, actually a full centimeter. This one has uh, 10, 10 millimeters of shift. So, um, I'm going to get this closer to the camera here. You can see, um, as I, as I slide the, the knob here, the lens is actually shifting on the, on the camera. So what does that do, right? I'm gonna put this on my tripod here right next to me. I'll swing the camera a little bit so you can see it on the tripod. So what that allows me to do is I'll go into live view here. I have it tethered to Capture One. So that's what my camera is seeing right now. It's just my sort of office behind me, the sofa and the, the bookshelf. Um, so if I'm, if I'm rising and falling with the camera, you can see what it's doing. Here's rise, right? The camera is level. Everything is staying the same. I'm not tipping the camera up. Here's falling, right? So that's rise and fall and shift. I can rotate the camera, the lens 90 degrees on the body. I can shift side to side. So. You know, you can look, you know, you can shift your image circle from left to right, from right to left um, to uh, to get a different part of the image. So we do this constantly, right, in architectural photography. Uh, we always sort of start with a level camera and then we oftentimes will drop the horizon line so we don't have so much uh, foreground. Um, sometimes if we're looking down a hallway but we don't want to you know, we want to see a room to the left of the hallway and not the whole wall on the right will shift. So we're still, the camera is still in one point perspective looking down the hallway, but we're seeing into a room on the left or the right. Um, so how can we use this to make, 
to make panoramas. There's a couple ways. First, I'm gonna show you a way to do it in Capture One, which is semi-new, um, very useful because you are stitching a file um, in a raw handling software that then you can do global moves on. Um, you know, you had problems with things like vignettes in the past. If you wanted to do vignettes on an image in raw, you couldn't really do that if you were stitching them together because then you'd put a vignette on two different frames or three different frames or whatever. And then those vignettes would overlap in the, uh, in the, the parts that were stitched together. Uh, so we def definitely don't want to do that if, if, if we can help it. Um, so we can do things like that um, with, uh, with Capture One now. And then I'll also show you a way to do it um, in Photoshop. Everything's going to line up super well because, you know, the camera isn't moving. Your, your parallax isn't happening. So um, let me kill... Uh, actually, here, just for the sake of fun here, let's do a vertical panorama. I'll shift this back around here. We're still in live view. We'll do uh, a bottom piece here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, take a use this guy to, to take a capture. So there's one, and then we'll shift up here, leaving ourselves plenty of overlap, but maybe we'll go to there and we'll take another, there you go. All right, so we have two exposures now that have come into capture one here. Um, so that's the bottom and the top. See, we've left ourselves plenty of overlap. So all you need to do in Capture One is right click on one of the two files when you have them both selected using Shift or Control if you're on Windows to, um, you know, double to click the two files. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, stitch to panorama here right under Merged HDR, you guys can see. Um, so it's gonna open a new dialog box for you. Um, and it's going to generate a preview of the stitched file. Um, we can choose between these four different uh, panorama projections. Um, this is going to depend a little bit on, you know, how you made the panorama. And it's definitely going to apply much more to when you're not using a tilt shift lens. Um, each of these uh, previews is going to be generated and then we can skip through them once they're all generated because they're they're cached, they're buffered for us. Um, it's You're not gonna see much difference. So here's Panini, perspective, cylindrical, and spherical, almost no difference. Um, so, you know, we're just gonna leave it here on spherical or actually perspective is probably the one we wanna do in case we had a tiny bit of, you know, shift on the, on the camera. Um, so here you can see we're making a 148 megapixel file out of 200 megapixel files because we got approximately 50% overlap there. Um, so then we just hit stitch and it's going to give you a new DNG, uh, which is going to be a raw file that you can then work on in Capture One. As you would any other file, you can, you know, here we'll, uh, we'll now switch to that file. Here it is. So now we can open up our boxes here and you know we can put a vignette on the whole file right rather than just on each half of it we can pull our highlights in right we can open up our shadows we can add brightness and contrast we can then go do a curve we can do whatever we would to a normal file only now we don't have to worry about how they're going to overlap right we can adjust the, the color temperature of the overall file it's a great way to do it i would say at this point that's best practice, right? Um, the other thing that's nice is we used to have to do this in the field where we would be working with a client right here. So now we've made a nice vertical vertical composition out of two horizontal pieces, right? Um, so in the past when I did this, I, if I was you know, making an argument that we should shift, I would um, take each frame and then I would pr produce JPEGs and then I would open them in Photoshop and then I would stitch them and then we would look at that and then we would, you know, make an edit, you know, do it again. It was very time consuming in the field. Oftentimes once I had one that I knew I liked, I would throw the actual PSD into the capture folder in Photoshop. So then I knew this is a stitch here. So then I would know that you know, this is what uh, this is what we, it would be a placeholder for the for the end, but we could still look at it in Capture One in the field. Um, so yes, that's step or that's way one. So then you can produce this and work on it in Photoshop just as you would any other file. Um, 
The second way here that we can do it, um, I'm actually going to go through here and find the, um, this is a fun shoot, it's a very nice light. Uh, I'm going to quick scroll down here and find the file that I stitched and we'll, we'll actually do a stitch on it. should be coming up here soon. I probably should have just sorted these by color tag. Okay, so here are the two. So this is a horizontal shift, right? So here's, you know, two sides of the same frame. You can see I have no vignette on this intentionally. I have highlight and shadow, a tiny bit of contrast and brightness on it. They're the same color temperature. Actually, I, I think that I bumped this when I was when I was preparing this file earlier. Um, 55, 52, or 55, 22. I'll just change that quickly so that they're the exact same color temperature. Um, they're both the same shutter speed, aperture, everything. So yeah, this was a 17 millimeter shift. My back was against a construction fence. My camera was super high to get over. The, it was a very, you know, not optimal situation. Um, but what we do, what we'll do here is we'll produce, uh, we're gonna do it in full resolution. So um, we'll produce, uh, I'm just gonna name these pano. Um, we'll produce the two sides and we'll bring them into Photoshop and. It's the normal way you've probably been doing it in Photoshop, but we'll just do it quickly. Um, let's see here, I pulled this file. Okay, so here's our two sides. We'll open them up in Photoshop. All right, so we have Pano 61 and Pano 60 here. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh, file, automate, photo merge, right? And then we're gonna uh, we'll just hit add open files and then we'll delete the one that um, that we don't need. So we just need pano 60 and pano 61. You can probably leave it in auto, but I would suggest you um, change it to perspective or reposition only actually. Um, that way it's not gonna put any funny little ugh, warping moves on your file because we know that our, our um, camera was, you know, on a parallel plane with itself as it shifted, right? So we're not gonna have any warping. Um, so I'll, I'll change it to reposition only, hit okay, and it should do a fine job of stitching these two together. Um, and then we can, you know, go through the retouching if you want, but it's nothing new here. Let's see how it does. Okay, so here's its seamless composition, right? Um, so there, there you have it in Photoshop, right? So there's a, there was a tiny little bit of offset. You can see here, um, we had, you know, the, my shift wasn't probably perfectly parallel. Um, so we're gonna have to make sure we do that crop. Um, to play devil's advocate here, what we can also look at is just doing a stitch to panorama here. This feature wasn't available back when I, when I photographed this, right? Um, so, there you go, it's stitched in Capture One, it does it even faster. Um, and now we could, you know, do some some moves on it. Here it is, right? So now we now we can go ahead and and you know adjust the uh, the vignette. We can, you know, warm the shot up very slightly. Now that I see them stitched together, I see that, you know, the sky is feeling a little cyan up here. So you know, we can, we can make better, you know, we're better educated here when we can see the whole picture, so to speak. Um, in Photoshop, you know, on this file, I think all I did is remove this lamp post and this, um, these few kind of odds and ends here. And then um, the other thing I would do is probably brush the, um, this, this street down. Um, the, the street right now is sort of the brightest thing. So I'd probably go in with the soft mask here and, uh, and darken that down. I'm not gonna get into that today. You guys have seen all my other retouching videos. Um, this should be on luminosity um, because we don't wanna make the street yellow as we darken it. Um, you guys have seen all my other retouching tutorials. Nothing special happens here. Just some, you know, clone stamping, some remove tool and some, some subtle curve stuff. But um, that should be a good education on how to use a tilt shift lens to make a panorama um, and 
you know, it's an effective, it's an effective tool when you need it. So, um, and the new, the semi new um, capture one, you know, ability to make panoramas in the program is, is fantastic. So um, thanks all for, for tuning in for another week. Um, I appreciate it. The comments have been great lately. Um, I'm really appreciating it. This was one of the requested, uh, the requested tutorials that you guys asked for recently. I'm still working on lighting. Um, I'll get to it, I promise, at some point, but um, that's where we're at now. So uh, thank you all. Have a fine day and uh, enjoy your spring.